Good morning. Um, today we ask a question. Can I tell my lawyer everything? We are talking about legal advice privilege. What to expect when using a solicitor? Who is a solicitor? And who is a lawyer? And who is actually a client? In this podcast, I will be explaining the duties of a solicitor that is owed to a client and whether the communication or your dealings with a solicitor can be protected in terms of confidentiality as enshrined in the Data Protection Act. We will look at a solicitor and the work that we do in relation to dealing with you as a client and how we can protect the information that you give to us. Now, the duty of confidentiality as an obligation under both common law and the data protection legislation, as well as being one of the core professional principles set out in, um, that is uh, section 13E of the Legal Services Act 2007, and also the professional standards in the solicitor's codes. These are something that the solicitor would act in your case and it would underpin whatever he or she does in relation to keeping your information and evidence um, um, confidential. Now, when we ask the question whether you should tell your solicitor everything, what we mean is that, are there any information that you should not disclose to your solicitor? Our answer is no. Tell your solicitor everything because your solicitor is a person who is regulated, there is a protection for you that the solicitor will keep your information and evidence safe. Now, we are talking about legal advice privilege. What does that mean? Legal advice privilege is whereby the communication between your solicitor and yourself, evidence that you provided in support of your matter, they are all kept confidential and may not be disclosed except when law permits or you consent to that information being disclosed to a third party. Now, there are exceptions to the disclosure of information when we are talking uh, of legal advice privilege. Sometimes a court may ask your solicitor to provide information. On that occasion, he may not be able to refuse to disclose that information to the court. Having said that, if you disclose an information to your solicitor, that is something that when you first saw your solicitor and he was taking instructions, you mentioned things and he recorded, that communication will always remain confidential and will always be regarded um, as something that is a communication between you, the solicitor, and the client, and that should be protected. So we are saying... Um, as a matter of um, uh, encouraging and to trust your solicitor, there are these elements to protect whatever the relationship is with your solicitor in terms of your information that has been given to him. Therefore, we are encouraging you that when you go and see your solicitor the next time, please do well to tell everything. When you are telling everything, make sure that you remember if your solicitor were to be asked to provide that information, is this something that it will not or it may not affect you and therefore be measured in the information that you give up? So let's have an example. If you're going to see your solicitor and you are instructing your solicitor about an immigration case and then you told your solicitor that you have two date of births and then you use one before in a previous application and then now this is your date of birth, please, if the communication is verbal and you are telling your solicitor, he or she may record this information. If you add a BEV certificate to that showing both BEV, please, the solicitor may not be able to pro protect that information because there has been a third party document provided and therefore he will be obliged to disclose it if um, acts. And that's why we're saying that you have to be measured and know exactly what documentation you hand over to your solicitor in support of your case. One thing that we want the community to also understand is that who is a client? Now that we know 
who is a solicitor, a person who is advising you in your legal matter. A client is a person who has instructed a solicitor to deal with his or her matter. Now, the difficulties that sometimes we face is the fact that um, a sponsor, who, is, who it could be that a wife or a husband, who is supporting an application may think that he or she is also a client and therefore will call the solicitor for an information. I'm sorry, because the client is the person, the applicant who instructed the solicitor, the solicitor may not be able to disclose information to the sponsor who may be the wife or the husband because of confidentiality that is enshrined in the codes of the solicitor's work. And therefore, don't be offended when the lawyer refuses to give an information to you, although he or she knows you that you came there with the um, applicant we may not be able to disclose that information because the client is the person who instructed. The other question that normally we um, tend to answer is that, you know, people do ask whether they can actually um, change solicitors whilst a case is ongoing. The answer is yes. You can actually change solicitors um, at any time, at any point in your case. Um, you don't have to give any reason for changing your solicitor. On the other side, can a solicitor refuse to um, act for a client or even take the matter um, as a whole? The answer is yes, but unlike the client who can just wake one day and decide not to continue with a case with a solicitor, the solicitor must give good reasons why he or she is refusing to take on your matter or um, saying that he's going to cease to act. For example, if the solicitor hasn't got a competence in the area that you are instructing him or her, he or she may refuse to take that instructions because, of course, there won't be the necessary knowledge or the skill to deal with your matter in your best interest. And therefore, refusing to act will be in your best um, interest. Another point is if maybe because of funding issue, maybe you are eligible for um, legal aid, the solicitor hasn't got a contract with the legal aid, the agency, he or she may refuse to act because you will be better off instructing a legal aid solicitor firm to, to act in your matter. And therefore, the answer to that question is, yes, a solicitor can refuse to act for you or cease to act for you. So in a nutshell, um, if you instruct your solicitor, the communication between you and him or her can always be seen as confidential and be protected as legal um, advice privilege. However, if there is a litigation privilege also, we can apply that. But most of the time, information given out from a third party cannot always also get the same protection as legal advice privilege. And therefore, you should be careful when you are instructing a solicitor the documents and the information that you give out. But be rest assured that because of data protection and the codes for the solicitors, you are at your instruction or information or evidence given will always be in the safe hands because they will be protected and the solicitor will not disclose that information to anyone. I hope you've learned something from this as in when you are instructing a solicitor and what information to give up. Same time next week, we will come back with another topic. Take care and have a good week. Bye-bye.